The sponsor of the video is PCBWay. Now, they're one of the top PCB manufacturers out there, and you can quickly have your projects ready-made for you within 24 hours with their 24-hour service. They also do have assembly and flashing services, and it's the company I always use whenever I create a product and or project. So go ahead and check the links down below. In today's video, we're taking a look at an all-new product from iFly. Now, this is called the iFly Cyclone XF305 BLS 4-in-1 ESC. Now, this is the budget line of 4-in-1 ESCs that iFly's been releasing, and it's rated for 45 amps, and it's only rocking BL Heli S, but it does run to 2.6S voltage, which is really great here. Now, we will be covering quite a lot today, so there's going to be timestamps down below. Now, some of the things we're going to be covering is the accessories, the overall advanced breakdown of the ESC's design, and also a beginner setup guide, how to connect us to any flight controller if you didn't buy any of the iFlight products. So we're going to be covering every single thing you might want to know about this ESC. So with that being said, let's get started. Now, I was considering this a budget ESC. The, the amount of things they do provide you in the package is actually quite spectacular. Not a lot of companies do that, which is really great. And also the design is really great here. So let's take a look at some of the things here. They give you a full-fledged XT60 connector with the proper wires. And these are 12 gauge wires, which is plenty enough and is gonna be perfect for any build. They also give you the standard connector, especially if you're going to be using any other iFlight flight controller. So you'll be able to connect this directly and you should be good to go. But so always double check the pin layout here so you don't really damage anything. So just keep that in mind here. They also give us another spare one that will go to any other flight controller that's not iFlight related, which is really great here. And they give us these rubber O-rings. They're not really, they're just O-rings that are going to sit under the flight controller or they're just going to sit above the flight controller or any, anywhere else really. They're not meant to go in any anywhere and they do have rubber grommets that are built in but they only give you these four and they do come pre-installed which is really nice however these eight are slightly different because there's only four of them four official rubber grommets that go into the hole and these are just meant to sit below or possibly above anywhere in your stack setup here so now let's go ahead and jump into the advanced breakdown part all right, guys, so this is the advanced breakdown of the 4-in-1 ESC. So first of all, we can see, let's actually take a look at the filtration first of all. So we see here we got some pretty decent filtration. It's in the lower OKs, and you're definitely going to, and I definitely recommend you add a low ESR capacitor, whether you're running a 4 or a 6S build, because obviously this takes both. And speaking of low ESR capacitor, I like the design aspect. They give us two holes to insert our low ESR capacitor to make the overall installation process much, much easier. Now, if you don't know how to install the low ESR capacitor, I will cover that in later part of this video for the beginner setups. Now, they don't provide you with the capacitor, so you're going to have to get your own. So keep that in mind as well. Now, for the MOSFETs, are using Toshiba FETs. Usually anything that starts with TP stands for Toshiba. So they are using a well-known name brand here, which is really great to see. Now, for the pads here, they've also done edge plating which is a much more expensive process where you see also right on the edge side you see that copper and what that does is it just increases the copper and gives you more place where the current can flow which also means more power delivery and it's something you always want to kind of look for so they've checked that box in my opinion Filtration isn't really a check in my opinion. Design aspect here or ease of use, they also get another check. Um, for the rubber grommets, it's really nice that they've installed that also. So these are, these just come with it, but they don't give you any spares here. So just keep that in mind. Um, also make sure you take note of the motor numbering here. So we have motor one, two, three, and four. So this is how it's supposed to be installed in your quadcopter with this being the front up here and the battery leads would be in the back. So keep that in mind. And this should be up top, the unit, the FETs, you should be able to see the FETs up top here. Now, if we move to the bottom side here, we see that the logic is very beautifully laid out. It's like art right here. This is so clean. So it's really nice. You could easily distinguish the four ESCs in this board. So here's one, here's another one, and here's the other one right here. So that's the whole circuit for an ESC. It's very simple actually. And then you get some of these uh, FETs right here. So you have like, one, two, three, four, five, six. So for example, these would be for here, these would be for here, and these would be for here. Same thing goes for this. So these are the ones in charge of everything right there <clears throat> because you need two FETs for each phase if you didn't know that. Now, if we take a look at the microcontroller unit, they are using the BB2 chips and that's why it is a BL Heli S. So D-Shot 600 maximum here, uh, no telemetry. And we also do have shot resistor for current reading, which is a must nowadays. And the overall layout of the connector is pretty simple and basic, which is ground battery voltage, which means we don't have a voltage regulator on board, even though they could have fit one here. So whatever you're going to be pairing this up with, make sure you uh, make sure your flight controller takes battery voltage because that's what the ESC is going to give here. And then we have our motor one, two, three, and four outputs, current reading, which is obviously this guy right here. And NOP means not connected. So just don't connect anything there. It 
could be sometimes uh, connected to ground. But from looking at the trace right here, it doesn't seem like it's connected anywhere. But just in case, never really connected anywhere. If it's, uh, you know, NC or NOP or whatever, just don't connect those. Uh, so you don't have a problem shorting something out if they accidentally connected it to something else. And that's really going to conclude it for this part of the video. And again, I wish there, there was a bit more filtration here. Maybe if they set up the capacitors in this orientation, they could have probably fit more in there. Maybe. I think that's what I would have tried to do, but maybe the design didn't really uh, help them do it that way. But the filtration is okay. It's better than others. But again, it, it doesn't check my uh, inbuilt filtration box. So definitely add a capacitor to this. And you, you, you're more than likely going to have noise in your video feed if you don't add a low ESR capacitor with this setup, especially if you have noisy motors. And that's going to include it for this part of the video. Let's go ahead and jump into the beginner setup guide if you didn't know how to connect this. So in this part of the video, we're going to be covering the power and also the orientation or how this this ESC should be installed in your quadcopter before jumping into the flight controller connection. So the way this is supposed to be installed, if you take a closer look here, we have motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. This is perfect beta flight orientation, and this should be installed like this unless you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, this is how it's supposed to be installed with the batteries in the back of the quadcopter. You're looking at these FETs up top, and the front should be, uh, the camera should be up here somewhere. So this is the first thing you need to take into consideration or else your quadcopter will never fly unless you know what you're doing here. Now, the next thing is power and also the low ESR capacitor. Now, I highly recommend you purchase one because it doesn't come with one. And I'll have some link down below, which are really great and I have tested previously, did some real testing on. So we see that we do have these two holes right here and these are meant for the capacitor. You should always install the capacitor first, especially when there's holes that are this close to the pads. And this is just to make your life so much easier. So you're always gonna start with the low ESR capacitor first before connecting the XT60. Now, if you have a low ESR capacitor, the way to know which side is going to be the minus or the ground is you're gonna look at the capacitor and find the stripe you're gonna see a line that goes off to the side and not always you'll find this minus sign here but wherever the stripe is that side is going to be the ground and then once you find that then you can go ahead and just connect it to the ESC you're gonna solder that into place and then obviously you're left with one more leg which is going to be the positive side so we're just gonna route that right over here and just like that, we have our Louis Arc capacitor connected. Next, we're gonna cover the XT60, which should be pretty simple also. So the red's gonna go to the positive right here, and also we're gonna take the ground and we're just gonna run it right there. And just like that, we have this completely done. So it's very simple. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step where I show you how to connect it to any flight controller. Uh, if you purchased a flight controller that's not iFlight branded, so you won't be able to use that connector and you have to do this manually. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so in this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect this ESC just about any flight controller you'll ever want to connect it to. So there's a couple things you need to identify first. One is we need to know what this 4-in-1 ESC outputs as power. Is it going to give us 5 volts or is it going to give us battery voltage? Well, here we can see it says ground and it says bat. So that means battery voltage. So this ESC is going to output whatever battery you put in here. So if you put a 4S, it's going to output 4S uh, voltage. If you put a 6S, it's going to output 6S voltage. So the next thing you need to figure out is your flight controller's power input. Sometimes they take 4S, sometimes they take 4 to 6S, sometimes they just take 5 volts. If they take 5 volts, you're going to fry your flight controller and this ESC will not be able to power it. You're going to need some sort of a voltage regulator. However, nowadays, all flight controllers usually take battery voltage. For example, this one takes a 4 to a 6S input, which is perfect. That's what we want. Then after that, after we identify that they're both going to be compatible, we need to start routing the wires, which is going to be very simple also. So these are just theoretical wires. I mean, this is not the real orientation on this flight controller, but it's gonna work on any other flight controller. All you need to identify are the ground, VCC or battery, whatever it might be called, one, two, three, and four, which is gonna be motors one, two, and three, and four. Usually they're in the same area all together here. And then we have CR and RX4, which we're gonna cover also. So let's go ahead and start connecting this. So the first thing the flight control is going to need is obviously power. So here's the ground wire. So all we have to do is connect this to the ground wire that's coming in from the ESC, which is this right there. So that's going to be ground. The next one is going to be VCC, which is basically the battery. So we're just going to go ahead and connect this also. And it's just right next to it, right there. You can see it says battery right there. So actually, maybe I should do this like that. Yeah, there we go. So there we go, we have our battery. Next is gonna be motor one, two, and three, and four. And these should be routed exactly the same way you see them. So one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to three, and it just keeps going on. So here we go, here's motor one, for example. It's just gonna go exactly to motor one. 
and then motor two, three, and four. So all those will just be connected to one, two, three, and four, which are going to be, you just connect them very simple right there. Now we're left with two more wires. NOP or NC means not connected, so don't connect anything to it. And then all we need to connect now is the current. Now this is gonna give us the current reading in our on-screen display so we know how many amps we've drawn or how many amps we're drawing when we do a punch out. So we just get a rough idea of how many, uh, how much power we're using here. And usually these pads or these wires are called CR, CUR, uh, you know, CRNT. So it's always with a C. There's usually never anything else that's with a C other than CAM. So more than likely it's gonna be like the CR, or the CUs. So there we go, that would just connect right to that one right there. And those would be connected. Now you have current reading and you don't have to set anything else up in beta flight. And that's very much it for any other 4-in-1 ESC and flight control. It goes for everything. You just need to identify the power, ground VCC, and also make sure that the power is uh, compatible with the flight controller so you don't burn the flight controller. And just route motors 1, 2, 3, and 4 and then the current pad and telemetry obviously we don't have telemetry here but it would be that last wire which will go to that telemetry and we'll cover that in a later video once we get in 4 one esc with telemetry and well that's it guys i really hope you enjoyed the video everything is linked down below make sure you check those out those greatly support the channel also come join my patreon i do a ton of giveaways where i give out most of this stuff for free uh, i do 10 plus giveaways new patreons for the month get their own separate giveaway so if i got like one she's gonna win if i get like five it's gonna be between those five two between those two so it also does really support the channel and also check my merch. I do have a lot of nice FPV merch that we design and create on the website, which is shopdrawnmesh.com. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.